My name's Shaquan, but a lot of people know me by my other name, Mad Skills. I'm an MC. My name is Mad Skills. Now let's make some noise. I'm a DJ. Oh, yeah. I'm a ghostwriter for some of your favorite rappers. I'm not about to tell you who, though. Oh. But most importantly, I'm a hip hop enthusiast. Hip hop confessions is raw, unfiltered conversations with my friends revealing things that they didn't like, never knew about, I don't know, or never got into about hip hop culture. So sit back. Oh, come on, y'all. Turn up the volume. Hip hop. And listen to hip hop confessions. Because everybody's got one. Here's a little story that must be told. Then it goes a little something like this. this, this, this. What's up, world? It's your boy, Mad Skills, and we are back. This is my podcast, Hip Hop Confessions. Man, we live and direct for 2022. You already know what it is. I got one of my guys on the line, man. We getting straight to the shits. I'm not even wasting no time. I got a couple Damn. questions. I got a couple questions to ask him prior. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, 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 I'm more than excited to have you on the show, man. You a legend wow. to me. You know what I'm saying? You are. Your, your voice has been heard in, in, in places in the world that none of us at rappers could ever imagine you know what i'm saying i got my brother in the building man y'all make some noise for my man fat man scoop what's up brother what's up man what's up how y'all feeling what's going on um yeah lucky man just lucky to be able to 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 be able to do something you love every day and go around the world doing that man because it's yeah. very rare that you get to do that like who get to do that man like so right I'm just, I'm happy, man. And like you said, man, there's corners of the world that a lot of people probably will never get to. That mm-hmm. when you go there, you're going to hear, you're going to hear some Fat Man Scoop songs, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So listen, the last time we chopped it up was in uh, last year. Uh, I think I hopped on one of your lives. Oh, it started maybe, talking crazy. Maybe, maybe about a, a day or two after uh, the dip set locks uh, Yo, bro, battle. Boy. You started talking um, crazy. <laughs> how 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 was Harlem Scoop since 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 that day? No, how no, was no, Harlem? It's, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. That um, was that was a cold day in Harlem. No, nah, no, nah, that was uh, a bad. That, that was a real bad day. Um, you know, I actually I'm supposed to talk to Jimmy tomorrow. The the okay. thing that I, I I like is that everybody in the dips accepted it and. They, yeah. you know, they said what they said about it. If you heard Cameron, Cameron just came out with a freestyle about yeah, flex, it. yeah, or flex about it. So, you know, I, I think that is, you know, what is there to say? You live and yeah. you learn, yes, and you know, it's and you just live to that, fight another day. You live to fight another day, and you, the the thing about being a celebrity and and a and a um and a um a person that is in the public eye is that. Your losses are seen by everybody. So Facts. if you if you take a L in your house, only you and the television know about that. That's private. And, and, and maybe your dog or whatever he ain't right. gonna say nothing. But right. when you do when 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 it's on versus in front of you know four million people and memes and you know people in the in the audience go ooh, you know yeah. and you you gotta swallow that and yeah. You know, as time goes on, it gets better. So, I mean, my thing is that no matter what, Cam is Cam, Jim is Jim, L's is L's, Zeke is Zeke, and that ain't never going to go away. That's hard. Facts, 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 man. You know, and it's all in the, you know, in the um, in the camaraderie of rap. Rap has always been competitive. And I believe at the end of the day, the people, we we won. Because that was, yes. that was, in the, that was the, one of the most entertaining things I had seen on the internet. In a long time, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and it it was it was well worth the views, the weight, and all of that. I loved it. You know, to see, I always knew Jada Kiss was in the top ten, Fact. but that cemented everything. Mm-hmm. You know, for those who didn't know, for those who had no idea, for those who you know were unaware, Jada Kiss. I mean. He took it. He 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 did his thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Nah, listen, listen. You can't can't always. He's always said it. Top five that are alive. Man. Oh, and, 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 and he the, cemented it. He cemented it. But see, here's the, here's the thing. There's different. There's varying levels of respect and cementing mm-hmm. your legacy. When Rick Ross said he was the boss, nobody said a word. Facts. 
When Jada Kiss said he was top five, nobody said a word. Mm-hmm. When I got up one day and I said, yo, man, I'm the undisputed voice of the club, period, exclamation point, comma, nobody said a word. Right. So you that's one level of cementing your legacy. When you say something and nobody come to dispute it. Yeah. Okay. Man. Then it's that that extra level, like what happened at the garden. And mm-hmm. It's so, it's so, you couldn't have painted a better story. You yeah. know, anybody who plays basketball or rap that's from New York, you want to do it at the Garden. Mm-hmm. If you have not done it at the Garden, then you have not reached a a a a a a a a, 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 a level a in your career, a pinnacle right. in your career. Right. So I, w- I was lucky enough to do it at the Apollo and do it at the Garden. And for him to put on that kind of performance at the Garden, now, albeit it wasn't the Garden, the actual hardwood floor, but that was the Garden. Right. That was the yes. building. Yes, it was, that the, was garden. the Garden. That was inside right. that was of garden. Madison Square Garden. That, that was inside of Madison Square Garden. So, you know, with that being said, it was a hell of a, a performance on a hell of a night in a hell of a venue. Yeah, man. It definitely was. So, so listen, moving on, um, I got a couple things, you know, that I, I've always wanted to ask you and um, I've always wanted to get to the bottom of as far as your career and, and the things. A lot of people, Mike, they, a lot of people, uh, you know, some of my listeners, they, they know your voice from Be Faithful, but they might not know your story. So, um, you know, for me, you know, you used to be a rapper. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's like you used to rap back in the day. Yeah. I mean, I, I could still, if I wanted to, I could still... Sit down and you know whatever. Then then it's and then my sip again is my co-defendants. You know, then, right. Yeah, I can do all. I can do that right. too. You know, like right. I, I mean, once it's in you, it's in you. You know, what I'm saying you. I, there's many days that like a bar or a half a bar will come into my head. I never write it down, but maybe I'm gonna just start writing like when a half a bar come or a bar come or you know do this and this and then this this right this, and then, this, right. This, then, this, then my niggas you definitely, come you definitely so. got the pocket right yeah so you know I, mean, I mean I started as a rapper yes I, it was me a uh, 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 Sean C I know you probably know Sean yes, C from yes that's my producer brother, Black C and LV. yeah that Sean was well, Sean C and it's funny because Sean C and LV you know Sean myself my man Steve D and Rock Raider we had a group. And wow. um, those, you know, though I was the only MC in the group, and there were a bunch of other DJs that were called the X Men. They yeah. were the they were the guys who were in direct competition, and they and the and the group was actually formed to go against Clark Kent's Superman. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, so so I was the only rapper in that, and and you know, you know, that's where I I made my thing, and, and I did my thing. I could still do it if I wanted to. I think. Yeah, no, I, I I firmly believe it. Once it's like riding a bike, man. Once once you learn how to do it, you know what I'm saying. It's it's a talent that never leaves you. You know what I'm saying. And that's that's what's so great about hip hop and our culture, that you know what I'm saying. A lot of us have have been able to do multiple things. Yeah. And, and and do them well. You know look at look at you coming from roasting niggas' asses, then <laughs> then record deal, then wrap up, then this like you know when you're when you're an artist. You're an artist in many different things. When you're an athlete, you're an athlete in many different things. Like yeah. Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow. If you go look at his um high school high school tapes, he was giving dudes thirty on the wow. on the floor on the court. Wow. He was giving he was giving, uh, Lebron. Lebron put put up something a couple of days ago because he's from Ohio. LeBron, uh, Lebron's from Ohio. He mm-hmm. Lebron put up uh, some some video where he was giving somebody thirty on the, wow. you know. I, I, I'm Justin Herbert just dunked on some tall dude. Um, Tom Brady got got he 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 was the greatest quarterback of all time, but he was drafted as a catcher in the mm-hmm. in the MLB. When you have skills, it just translates. Yeah, no, I mean that that's that's a beautiful thing about our culture. Um, so you know, so with 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 be faithful. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to talk about that record real quick before we get into your hip hop confession, because I I just always wanted to know. You know what I'm saying? With that record, um, your voice has probably you know 
one of the most recognizable voices in 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 a club. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that song translate started as a club song, but then it translated to radio. And um, you know, then bar any, mitzvahs, <laughs> then then stadiums, then in yeah. any place you could just hear a voice. It, yeah, it went there. So when you hear yeah 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 bass drop, as soon as you hear that. You know what I'm saying? You already know what it is and you know what's about to happen. I it's only a few records in our culture as as a black man and, and as a DJ and as a, a a culture. It's only a few records in, in our culture that have that type of response. One of them to me is poison. Mm-hmm. When you hear the when you hear the break from poison, you know. Right. And uh I also want to put in uh It Takes Two. Yeah, I was gonna hear, say that. You know, when you hear boo, hit it, you know what that is. I yeah. want to rock right now and be faithful, right? So to me, you know, I, I always heard that, that I always heard, uh, I wasn't sure how, how true it was that, that y'all had attempted to get a deal from Puff and it didn't go through or, or, well, or Puff okay. wasn't with it or something like that. Well, well that, that was in my rap days. So that wasn't it. That was way before Crook the okay. Plan. That's okay. when I was I was a rapper. So the story behind that is that I and my dog, bro. I can't pet you right now. I'm, I'm with mad skills, bro. You, you gotta you doing too much. Um, um, he still wants me to pet him. So here, here here's the story behind that. I'm a rapper. So mm-hmm. I signed the GR GR Productions. Which is Teddy Riley and Gene Griffin now. Wow. Now, I Gene used Griffin. To, yeah. So I used to I used to rap. I used to rap in Harlem. I was very well known. I was in the Dougie Fresh system. My mentor was DJ Chilwell from the Get Fresh Crew. My everyday mentor, like day to day, we would be with him. But of course, you know, my mentor was Dougie Fresh. Mm-hmm. Right? Um so we got to do, you know, so I'm known for rapping all around Harlem because I'm from Harlem. And I used to hang out in a project called St. Nick. And I used to hang right on a, on 129th Street and 7th Avenue. Mm-hmm. And we used to, you know, be in the projects up against the, up against the fences, just like everybody else. And, you know, maybe about 30 feet from the fence, there was a, there was a, a window on the first floor. And out of this window, there you, you know, all music used to be playing all the time, but it wasn't music that was on the radio. Mm, music being made. Music being made. And this mm-hmm. person happened to be Teddy Riley. Wow. And built a 225 St. Nick Projects on the first floor. Wow. And I wound up knowing his brother Markel from the streets. Mm-hmm. So Markel was my man because we used to play CeeLo together. He's the most incredible fucking CeeLo player I've ever met in my entire fucking life. He'll right. take he'll take your money with his dice, then you'll want to fight him, and he'd be like, "Yo, give me your dice," and he'll <laughs> fuck you up with your dice. <laughs> right? You know, you know, you know, you know them dudes that just they can they can they right. got it they like got that. It. they got they that got hand it. they got that hand and and um you know for playing CeeLo and talking shit you know I, I knew Markel and Markel was like, yo, my brother's Teddy Riley. I'm going to take you to him. Yo, y'all the hottest rappers, rap niggas in this area. Come on down. And we wound up signing with Gene Griffin. Um, we were with Teddy Riley. We the only person, we are the only group that didn't come out out of um, Zan the Man, Rex in Effect, Today, Guy. All, uh, all of them groups he named in New Jack, Kingpin. Nick, New Jack Swing. Mm-hmm. I got Redhead, Red Zan the Man, Red Man, Red, 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 Red. Every, every of you, I got Redhead, Zan the Man, uh, uh, Today, Boy Guy, George. Rex in Effect, Boy George. Like, so all those people were there. We were the only people that did not come out with a record. Damn. Now, here's why we didn't come out with a record. We had done our album. Our mm-hmm. album was completely done. Everything was done. You know, they they let us, they gave us the budget. They let us do our thing. We went over to, um, I don't know if you know who Dave Bennett is, but Dave Bennett is Tony Bennett's son. And he had a studio. And we, I forget, Hillside Studios or Hilltop. Hilltop mm-hmm. or Hillside Studios. We went, did our album, everything. You know, we all, we all used to be together all day. Me. Uh, Redhead Kingpin, Wild DJ Wildstyle, Bo Rock, um, uh, Squeak, all the dudes from Redhead's crew, because 
the studio was right down the street from Redhead who lived in Englewood. So, mm-hmm. and you know, of course, I killed from Rex and Effects would come. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, God bless the dead, and of course, Markel. RIP, yeah. So, so now we got, we finished our album up and, and we drop it off to Teddy. Now, I'm, I'm cool with Teddy. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I never had a problem with Teddy, but Sean C and Teddy never got along for a while over this. Okay. So, at this time, Teddy has, he sold about forty million records, maybe fifty. Shit. And um. And this is before he moved to Virginia, because he's, he's still in Harlem. This is before he's still in Harlem. Still in Harlem. Still in Harlem. He's still in the streets. And um, you know, Sean C said, "Yo, listen, man, I never forget it, man." Sean went down to the session for "This Is My Fantasy." Yes, Image God. In a magazine. Yes, God. So he went down there. Ted was down there, and um, he told Ted. He said, "Listen, we don't want you, New Jack, New Jack, swinging this album up. Oh. It's supposed to be hard." <laughs> now, but listen, if you don't know Sean, I do Sean know is Sean. One, Sean is one of my best friends in the world. Yes, love that guy. And one of the things that Sean has always been from the beginning is extremely unapologetic. Mm-hmm. He going to say what he going to say, and that's it. Facts. Like, if you know Sean, you know how he is. He going to say, I don't like that. It's no good. Yo, man, what you doing with that, man? Like, And, and, and he, he could back that up because he's an amazing producer. Right. And on top of being a Hall of Fame DJ. Yes. Uh, you got to understand, top- Sean is a former guest on Hip Hop Confessions. I had Sean on the show. Sean LV, Young Chris, and Derek Angeletti. And okay, Sean, yeah. Sean's hip hop confession was with with D Dot in the room. Sean says, "Yo, I'm gonna be honest, man. Like, I, when when I first heard the Benjamins, I ain't like that shit. Like, right? Who don't like, like the Benjamins? He said Who don't it. Like the Benjamins? He said it right. He it's said fire. it. He was like, you know, I'm a beat maker. I saw what they did. They took it. They slowed it down. Like it was cool." But I wasn't, he said, I was wrong. Right. I was wrong. Right. But upon first listen, I wasn't sold. I wasn't feeling it. So, and, and so, that's, so that's how That's how Sean, Sean is. Sean is. He's very, he'll tell you that he's very blunt with what he does. So he goes to the studio and tells Teddy Riley, we don't want you New Jack swinging our we don't, shit. We don't, we, don't, we, we don't want you. We so want it hard. We want it hard. So Gene Griffin was in there. How he got out of there saying that, I don't know. Because <laughs> you know how Gene Griffin was. Right. So how he got out of the studio, and I always say that to this day. Yo, you just said that to Gene in his face? It's like, yeah. Charlotte, like nothing. And Charlotte, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, wow, he didn't do nothing? No. I, I, walk, I said it and I walked out. Now, if you know anything about Gene Griffin, Gene Griffin will smack you in your face for nothing. Wow! That's, like, like, that's what type of time Gene Griffin was on back oh, then. Oh, man. Gene Griffin was smacking everybody up. Artists, um, 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 music executives. I'm not even going to go into the stories with MCA. Yes. I'm not going to do that because, you know, people dead. Yeah, people, stuff. yeah. I'm not doing that. But listen. We heard I was I was there when Gene would... Went and grabbed the grabbed the grabbed the forty five out the dresser drawer. Said, "Hold on, motherfucker, I'll be back." And, and like, 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 what? Now you know, I'm, I'm I'm from Harlem. I've seen guns and seen shit, but I ain't never seen nobody just do it. Like, hold on, motherfucker, I'll be right back. I'm the motherfucking macaroni in here, and, and like, and, and then go off and do something. Wow. So, um, you know, Gene Griffin is the precursor to Suge Knight. To Suge Knight, yes, because he's the one who taught Suge Knight the game. Facts. Heard it's that an before. actual fact. Heard, heard that before in the yes. end game. Because at one point, I believe that um, I didn't see him because I wasn't. I was around, but I wasn't on the road. You know, I had. I didn't have a. Re- I didn't have a record deal, so I wasn't out on the road like today. Uh, Rex and Effect and stuff like right. that. But redhead, a uh, redhead, and those guys. But um, Suge was the bodyguard for Bobby Brown. Yes, and on that tour. So he was, you know, him and Shug, him and Gene had had conversations. So when I 
saw what Suge was doing, I said, wait up, hold on. That's Gene Griffin shit. That's Gene's shit. whole bag. That's Gene whole shit. Um, so anyway, Gene Griffin, he he so so I get a call. Um, we didn't even have um we didn't even have fucking um cell phones. Cell phones. Then. We had beepers. Yeah. So I got a beep and I got I went to the phone. Come on down to the to the thing. So come down to the studio. So I was like, I right, I come down. So I get down to the studio, and Gene comes up to me like, "Hey, motherfucker, what's up? You know what's going on?" He said, "Yo, man, motherfucker, disrespectful. Your man very disrespectful, man. You, you look man very disrespectful." I said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "Your man came in and said he don't want nobody." To, New, New Jack, New Jack Swingers, the motherfucking album up. Look, motherfucker, we we just sold sixty million records, nigga. What the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, well, I ain't hear nothing. What happened? So he told me the story, and um, he said, listen, listen, motherfucker, you can lead the motherfuckers tonight, and I give you a hundred thousand dollars and a BMW 745, 745. You like my motherfucking seven forty five, right, nigga? I said, yeah, yeah, I love that shit. You know, I love that shit. I used to like, you know, when he would pick me up every once in a while. He picked me up maybe like two or three times. He drive me to when I was uptown. He would drive me down. If he was at Saint Nick, he would drive me down to the to the um to the to the office to get a check or whatever. Right. And he was like, "You like my motherfucking car, nigga?" But I said, "Yeah." He said, "Nigga, I give you a hundred thousand and a BMW seven fifty seven fifty like me if you lead the motherfuckers. Come and do your album by yourself, and that's it." And I said, "You know something, man? I'll think about it." And I said I'll think about it because I just wanted to get the fuck out of there because I knew that Gene Griffin wasn't nothing to play with. Right. And um, I got I, I I went uptown and I saw Sean, and I never had any intention of leaving. Right. And because of that, you know, we were on the way to getting dropped, but at the same time, Gene Griffin and Teddy had a problem, so the, the company dissolved. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember that. So I, you know, I, I never had the intention of doing it, and I wasn't going to leave my people because I believe you you come to you dance with the motherfucker you came to the club with. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not on that kind of shit like that. So and you know it's so crazy because what if I would have done that? I would be considered super old school now. I might have never became fat man school. Right. So, you know, the decisions you make today will form, you know, where your life goes in the future. So anyway, we go and it, it dissolves and now we go, now Chill Will takes us to Teddy Riley. I mean, to, to, to Puff. Yeah. So Puff, Puff here on tape, we made a new demo. Puff here on tape, nigga like, yo, I love this shit. I want to sign y'all niggas right now. Scoop, here's what we're going to do, nigga. We're going to keep doing that shit. And then we're going to turn around later. We're going to put you in a suit and tie. We're going to make you for the bitches, nigga. You're going to be the man. Wow. What that's was the big, name of the group? That, that's big. That's big. Yeah. So, so, so. What was the name of the group that you and Sean and at that time? Had? At that time, it was called the Biz Boys. We were called the Biz Boys. Gotcha. And um, um, what happened from there is that that wasn't the kind of, you know, even though I was rapping hard, I was still a comedian, a funny dude, personable. I wasn't no tough guy. And right. I knew that if I pulled that shit off, if I did it, I was going to have to get the goons from my hood. It was going to be hard at home. Right. No, no, well, well, not even hard. I was going to have to go get Trow, my man Rob Roach, Rammy, Black Rammy from Schaumburg, you know, because I'm from Schaumburg, the home of the Central Park Five. So I was going to have to get all the niggas from around my, my God bless the dead, my man Cell. I was going to have to get dudes from Foster, dudes from uh, uh, Jim Jones Project, and Cam, Cam, or Taft, all the niggas from my neighborhood. Now that's right. cool. But at some point, when you're not the killer, you won't get extorted. Whether it's silent, whether it's friendly, or whether it's forced, it's going to be extortion. Because you, if you don't bust your gun like that, eventually you pay it. Yeah. So I said, let me do something more that's in my soul. And it came out sounding more like De La Soul. Okay. And I had made a style. It was my own style. Me, Sean, and, and my man Steve thought kind of came up. It was a fusion between 
James Brown meets like De La Soul. Okay. And I went back to Puff with that tape. Me and Sean C and Steve. That nigga took that tape and threw that shit so far across the fucking... Yo, get this shit, nigga. What the fuck is this? You know how Puff is. You know how Puff is. Fuck, nigga. Fuck, nigga. Like, because I've been... What the I've been, fuck been, is this Yeah, shit? yeah. I've been, I've been giving... I've been... Puff gave me the shits like twice. So he gave me that shit like that time and the time that I brought Be Faithful to him. The first time anybody ever heard that shit other than myself and the Crooklyn Clan. And he shit it on it. He shit it on Be Faithful. But that's that's another story. But anyway, so he takes the tape and literally the nigga <coughs> throws that shit all the way across the room. And he don't even throw the shit. <coughs> Excuse me, I want to get something to drink. He don't even throw the shit like, he don't even throw it lightly. The nigga threw the shit like he was Roger Clemens. The nigga threw the <laughs> shit like 89 miles an hour. Like, get this shit out of here. Fuck out of here. That shit could have gone through the window, right? Right. So we like, all right, cool. And, um, you know, that, you know, I, at that point I realized that I couldn't be, I couldn't pull it off. So that wound up ending. And then I went and got a job. And um, then that's when I became an intern and went to Tommy Boy and it became Fat Man Scoop and was on the radio. And mm -hmm. I started making these records to put my brother through Hampton. Uh, speaking of um, Sean C and LV, we're all like a family. Okay. So so my brother, his name is Young Sav. Mm -hmm. I know Sav. So, so Sav is my little brother. So because he was my little brother, he's 11 years younger than me, I was, you know, he would be with me all the time. So he would be with my friends and like Sean C and with my friends, he would always be with us. But his little team was LV and like three other dudes. Mm -hmm. So my brother, again, we like from Schaumburg, 9th Street and Schaumburg, 110th Street. And LV is from Lakeview, which is like three blocks down the, the street. But LV and, and Young Sav went to school together. So that was his little team. Right. And, and, and so that meant that LV would come around us. And that's how Sean C and LV got together. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Just a gener generational thing. Two generations of, you know, people in the same circle. Right, right. Got you. Got you, man. That, that's crazy, man. Um, so, so I already gave you a story. That Gene Griffin story, that's real. <laughs> She's crazy. It it definitely is. It definitely is. Now, with that being said, uh, for your record, like I said, for your record to be as big as it is worldwide, uh, I for years I toured with DJ Jazzy Jeff, my and, brother. Uh, you know, my we brother. went we went all over the world. I remember one time running into you. We was in Poland. Yes, I remember seeing you in Poland. Yes, and I was like, what the fuck is Scoop doing in Poland? Like, nigga. It, it was, I I was out there more than y'all. You was. You was. So. I, I, I was the, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Skills. My presence in America is really it. I'm really trying to rebuild that now. My whole shit is worldwide. I understood the worldwide audience early. I was never even in America. For 28 years, I used to go back and forth every week from New York to England, New York to Europe every week. I, yeah. I get on a a, a, a a bus, a plane like dudes get on a bus. Yes, I, I I realize this now. With the podcast being called Hip Hop Confessions, and we talked about yours, I need to know your hip hop confession. Tell me something. Oh man, I mean, I've been everywhere around the world, so I've seen everything, and um. My, 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 one of my confessions, man, one of the things that happened to me was I got, I got kind of semi kidnapped in, in Angola. Wait, you, wait, wait, wait. You got semi kidnapped? Well, yeah. Well, okay. So, so there was, we went, there was a promoter named Rakenio. And um, if y'all first think of that all, I'm, that already sounds like bad business. A promoter listen, listen, named Rakenio? Hold on, but let me tell you, let me tell you about Duke. So, and if you think I'm lying, you can go read uh, the uh, article. It's in the New York Times about 
when Nas didn't show up in Angola and they and they kept these dudes for 63 days. Jesus. So <laughs> this dude named Rakenya, right? He was a dude from Angola, and um there was a booking agent that used to rock with him and do shows exclusively with him. I'm not gonna say his name because I don't want to put him in the middle of no shit. Right. But anyway, he used to he used to get paid top dollar to go to um Angola. So I went to Angola and and I, I you know, first things first, they had so much power. This dude Rakenyo had so much power, like he was connected to the president. So when you got there, you didn't have to go through customs. They just took your passport and you walked through. Right? Mm-hmm. This dude was so powerful. I remember on the way going to the to the um to the to the to the air from the airport to the hotel. Something happened, and he got out in the street and straight bitch slapped a police officer. Like, <laughs> wow! I said, "Yo, what the fuck is? What is? What the fuck is this?" Yo, he straight went skills. When I tell you, this nigga just said, "He said, no, 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 no. A wow!" And that police officer with a gun on his hip, that nigga ate that shit. Wow! He ate it. He ate that. I said, "With a horn." I'm dealing with a different kind of nigga here. So, so what so, happened with you? Okay, so I get to the hotel. I get to the hotel. Um, I have like five days be- before the next show. So I get to the hotel, and the, it's the night of the show. I'm getting ready to do the show. One of Rakenyo people come and pick me up, and he's like, "Yo, man, I, I get ready to do the show. I'm going downstairs. I get my shit, whatever." And he's like, "Yo, man, don't uh, uh, the show is canceled. We'll do it tomorrow." I said, yo, bro, what y'all talking about doing it tomorrow? He said, don't worry about it. We'll do it tomorrow. But remember, I got paid high, high, high five figures to do this. Mm-hmm. So because of the money I got paid, I just said, you know some fuck it, I eat it. Right? So I call him and I'm like, yo, man, I want my fucking passport back. He said, right, don't worry about it. You get your passport tomorrow. You get your passport tomorrow. So I go back in my room and I, you know, I spend the night and whatever. When I get up in the morning, I'm like, yo, I want my passport. Mm-hmm. Cause right? I can't get out of here without it. I can't get out of here without my passport. So, all right, so boom, boom, boom. So we all, me and my, me and my road manager are talking about what's going on, right? And we down in the lobby talking about what's going on. I see yo, man, I want my fucking passport. The fuck's going on here? But my my road manager's talking mad loud. That nigga talking greasy. Yo, I'm going to fuck these niggas up. I'll get my passport, whatever. Yo, imagine just you talking in a, in a, imagine you just talking in a lobby full of niggas, right? Mm -hmm. And you talking shit. And then somebody just is standing next to you, just hand you the phone like, here, Rakenyo want to talk to you. Oh, wow. It's like the niggas that you stand around, everybody, this nigga fuck with everybody here. He said, hey, man, blah, 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 don't worry about it. You know, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I said, yo, man, he said, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I said, yo, I'm, yo, bro, I want my passport. He said, don't worry about it. I'll be over there in, in, in fucking 10, 15 minutes. It the reminds, nigga, me, it on, reminds nigga, me of, go ahead, oh, go oh, ahead, go ahead. I got you, go ahead, go ahead. The nigga, come, the nigga comes over, right? And he got a bag, a book bag. In the bag, it's got dollars. Euros, Kwanzaa, fucking South South African Rand, fucking whatever currency you can think of. Right. The nigga comes out and give me two stacks. Nigga, give me two stacks. Nigga, give me 20,000. He like, yo, man, just chill another day. So I take the 20,000. I'm like, chill another. I, 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 fuck it. Chill another day. Right? So now I go upstairs and I got this 20K. He telling me chill another day. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. So I come downstairs the next day. And I want my now, now, now I'm like, yo, I want my fucking passport. And yo, I, I'm yeah. not feeling comfortable. Some the, the nigga comes back with another 10,000. Yo, take this, man. Take this. I go back upstairs and I'm like, I, 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 now I got 30000 extra dollars, but now I'm, 
Then now, so now it's the next day. So now we on day four. So I got thirty thousand dollars, but I'm like, yo, man, I want to. This money don't mean shit if I can't go home. Right. So now I go downstairs and I run into this white dude, and the white dude's like, yo, what you out here doing, man? Fat man school, what you out here doing? So he, I said, yo, I'm out here doing a show. He said, you doing a show with Rakeo? I said, yeah. He said, oh, man. And I uh, said, what? He said, yo, you know, they be keeping y'all rappers out here against your world, so and so and so. He said, he gave you some money? I said, yeah. He said, yo, man, he'll keep you out here till he wants you to do the show. And, you know, he, be, he, he just be forcing niggas to stay here or whatever. He said, listen, if you feel uncomfortable, here's the number to the U.S. Embassy. Mm-hmm. Just call them and tell them that you don't feel comfortable and they'll come pick you up and take you to the airport and get you out of here. So now we on day four. The morning of day four, I come up and I just don't feel comfortable no more, man. I'm like, where the fuck is my thing? You, whatever, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm uptight. I'm arguing with the niggas. Now they, they all around me and shit. I go upstairs. I call the embassy and I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Um, this is my name is Isaac Freeman. I am an American citizen. Blah 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 blah. And the guy, the marine on the other side of the phone said, "Yo, man, you sound like Fat Man School." I said, "Yeah, it's me, Fat Man School, Club McClan. Whatever I say, y'all got to do it." So the dude, like, he started laughing, but he like, "Yo, man, okay, Fat Man School, it's cool, man. You out here? We know about this. This has happened but with certain rappers. I'm not gonna name these rappers' names, but big, big names that happened. Blah blah blah." I'll come and get you if it, if it's a problem. He said, wait one more day. If you feel uncomfortable, in the morning we'll come get you. This afternoon, Akon comes in. Oh, wow. So here come Akon. Akon comes in on a private jet. Akon walking like it ain't nothing because, you know, he's from Africa. So he, that nigga walking in the streets like it ain't nothing. Ah, like, you know, he comfortable. He at home and shit. I said, he said, Scoop, what's going on? I said, yo, Khan, listen. These niggas won't give me back my passport. These niggas won't do so and so and so. Yo, listen, if this shit don't work out right, I'm going to need to get on that private plane with you. He's like, yo, don't worry about it. It's all good. Cool. They call me at 7 o'clock. They like, yo, man, come do the show. So I'm like, all right. So now I got this high five figures and I got 30000 extra. So I go, do, I, now, now when I get to the show, I'm like, well, y'all done paid me more than I, I could even think about. What y'all want? Y'all want a 15 minute show? Y'all want a, I mean, y'all want an hour what you show? Want me y'all, to do? Right. y'all want an hour and a half show? What y'all want? They said, nah, man, we just want, we just want Be Faithful. So I go out there and I start doing Be Faithful. And by the time I get to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, somebody jumps on my fucking back and I go to fucking elbow him, but I turn around and it's Akon. So yeah. Akon is jumping on my fucking back while I'm singing Be Faithful. So they stop the music and then that nigga starts singing, uh uh, who's this on Smack That? Uh uh uh, uh Smack yeah, That. Smack that. Man, 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 oh, smack right, that. So, so now I'm running around holding this nigga on, on walking around with this nigga on my back singing Smack That, right? All right, so we finished the show. Wait, Akon is on your back singing Smack That Ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, smack that. Let me some more Smack That. I'm like, this shit is crazy. So we get we I get back to the hotel. Khan is like, yo, you good? Everything gonna be good. You're gonna go home tomorrow. So I get up in the morning, the next morning, I'm ready to go home. So they take me to the airport. Now at the airport in Angola at this time, they didn't have computers. They would write your fucking ticket out on one of them tickets. Wow. So now they telling me, yo, your ticket ain't here. I'm going ape shit now. I'm like, yo, man, I, I, okay, I finally got my passport. Yo, where the fuck is my ticket? Boom, boom, boom. Like, I'm going off, right? So now I still got this 30000 right? Mm-hmm. So now they figure and they gave me the 30000 but when I go through customs, I'm going to get searched. They're going to take it back. Right. But I'm fat. So I take it and I put it under the rolls of fat in my stomach. Back then, I was like 330 pounds. So wow. it was a big stomach. I put it under the skin. Tucked under it the, under the, the skin. Under, right, tucked it under the skin. So I go through, and they searching me, but they're like, where's this $30,000? Right? But they can't find it. 
because it's under my stomach, but I'm getting so nervous, nervous from sweating. The money is, the money is falling out of my pants. So I finally get, get through, like they search me, I finally get through, but now the shit is going down my leg, it's going down my sweatpants. But I finally get to the thing, I get there, I go to the bathroom, I put it back up, and I go onto the plane. And when I got on the plane, now I'm finally on the plane, I got my passport, I don't feel worried about no shit. When I took off, if you've ever seen, have you ever seen the movie Argo? Yes. You know when they took, when the Swiss plane was taken off at the end? And they right That's, there on the And runway. they right there on the runway, and then they take off, and when they take off, they like, oh... That's exactly how I felt, bro. <laughs> was they was they close to the airport to get you, or you don't know? I don't either know, way. man. But either way, I was man. That, I slept like a fucking baby on that plane. I've <laughs> never slept any time in my life like that. Um, they, I, I, you know, some because this person is deceased. I mentioned their name. They had a they one time they they had a beef with DMX one time, mm -hmm. and they tried to keep DMX. Wow. And it turned into a real big beef. But I think DMX got on, they put DMX on the um on the Chevron plane to send him home. The Chevron, you know, because they used to do oil deals with Angola. Right, so right. Wh whatever happened with X, they put X, because X was turning up over there. So they, they said, yo, the, the government came and they grabbed him from what I hear. And they said, listen, get on the fucking, um, the Chevron plane which is the, the plane that all the oil executives used to use. And right, right, from, right. What I, from what I heard, X was, they was like, yo, this shit is going to Houston. And, and um, X was like, yo, well, I'm not from Houston. They said, I don't give a fuck. Just get on the plane. Right. Just go and back a, to the United States. There, there's a bunch of other rappers I won't mention, but I, I guarantee if you ask any rappers that went to Angola about that shit, they'll tell you their story. But that was mine. <laughs> You almost got kidnapped. Yo, bro, it was like the six day affair, <laughs> man. Yo, I was sitting in my I was sitting in my room like, yo, man, am I gonna make it home? I said, yo, man, am I do what kind of shit am I doing to try to pay this mansion every month, man? Like, I'm bugging. Right. Right. But you know, a we soft, all take those chances. Kidnapping. A soft Listen, kidnapping. Listen, we've all we we've all been in some situations where it's like, yo, this this shit is kind of sticky. I, I just want to go home. Because like you said, the money don't matter if I can't go home. The money don't matter. Yo, listen, there was, I'm not going to say the rapper's name, but <clears throat> there was a rapper that I did a show with in, in Germany on the border of Germany and France. And mm -hmm. it was some Algerian dudes. Like, I knew them. They were cool. So it was a big concert with me and this artist. And like two other people, but the, the headliners was me, and then this artist was way bigger than me. And this artist didn't want to come out the room. He's like, yo, fuck that. He took the money. He said, yo, I'm not performing. So it's starting to get late. And the dude, because I have done like multiple shows with these dudes. So they knew me. We had done good business. I fucked with them. It, it was no problem. So they called me, say, yo, Scoop, can you get on now? Because this nigga's not getting on. I said, cool, no problem. Because I was supposed to get on early in the night. So I right. got on, I did my shit. I came back to the hotel. It's like, thank you, no problem. I even, you know, because I, I knew them. They was my people. So like I had done like 10 shows. You know how when you do multiple, right. you have a multiple customer, you just be doing extra shit. Right. Because they're your rock people. With them. You rock with mm -hmm. them. So I gave them like an hour and 15. So I got back to the hotel and the artist was not coming out the room. I, I got up and maybe about 15 minutes later and I saw, I looked out my window and there was like niggas standing locked arm to arm, standing arm to arm. And they were lined up in front of the, the, the hotel. And then I, I came outside and it, it must have had about 600 people because they were all lined up, arm to arm, uh, lined up. They had circled the entire hotel. Wow. And and the dude told this artist manager, if he don't come out now, he ain't never fucking coming out. Wow. And them Algerian niggas was about it. He it was like seven hundred of them niggas. They had surrounded the hotel 
arm side to side, arm to arm, like you ain't going nowhere. Right. <laughs> so they told the nigga, the nigga, they told him when inside, he said, listen, if he don't come out and do this show right now, he ain't never coming out. Let him know. Mm. And the nigga came out and did the show. Wow. The niggas don't play over there. Niggas don't play yeah. over there. You in their house. Real. Don't get it yes. fucked up. You in you yes. in their shit. Like you and, in their shit. And you know, from internationally traveling a lot, you know, sometimes I, I've had to, you know, these they rules. This they country. This is how yep. they rock. Like, mm -hmm. like, yo, you can't drink that in here. You can't smoke that in here. You can't da 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 da. Like, yo, at this particular time, y'all gotta be da -da. you like, yo, it's, listen, I right, fam. Like, because as Americans, we go places sometimes and think it's about us. And no, we're like, right. nah, motherfucker, you in Germany. That's not yep. how we roll. And That's not like, how we do it. Oh, I right, bet. Listen, one of, one, one of the biggest mis misconception skills is, nigga, is that niggas in England are soft. Yeah, nah, that's not true at that's all. That's not true. No, like, they get, they, they bout they it, they bout it. They bout it. Them, like, like, like they, they, their gun game, you gotta be a real, real ill nigga to have your, bust your gun, but their knife game is they, crazy. knife game is crazy. Like, yeah, their stab game is crazy. Their stab game is crazy. So, you know, and I told them, I said, I consider y'all worse than us because to, we, I can shoot a dude from over here. But when you gotta stab somebody, you gotta get up on them. Mm -hmm. Take that, motherfucker. That's, that's Take close that. and personal. That's close <laughs> and personal. So when, I, I, I consider a dude that will stab you way worse than a dude who will, will who will shoot you from afar, man. That is that like like them dudes, them dudes out there that get busy, they have no problem in jail out here. Mm -mm. None. They have no problem. Like, boom, boom. That's it. Like boom. <laughs> so you know, you know, people think. Europe is soft. Europe is not soft, man. And, and, and you all. go fucking in the wrong place, man, with with Arabs, with fucking uh, Algerians, Tunisians, fucking um, dudes like that. Turkey, dudes from Turkey, all my dudes from Turkey and in Germany, niggas is gangsters. Yeah, nah, real talk, man. Real man. talk, man. Well, thank you, brother. I, I appreciate you pulling up, man. I've been trying to get you on since like last year. I'm happy we finally made it happen, man. And we got two stories. We wound up getting two stories. Yes, yes, yes. We definitely did. So listen, before we get out of here, let everybody know where they can follow you. What's your social medias and all that? Simple, man. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at Fat Man Scoop. But I live, I live on Instagram. So if you want to get at me, you want, you know, I answer my DMs. I have fun. Hit me, man, on Instagram at Fat Man Scoop. I love y'all to death, man. Love you, skills. You already know what it is, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. One time for the bro, Fat Man Scoop, and this is Bad Skills right here on Hip Hop Confessions, because everybody got one. Here's a little story that must be told. And it goes a little something like this. this, this, this.